And Catholic theologians and Eastern theologians have always been very sensitive in the way they describe the end of Our Lady's life. Uh, the reason for this is because Our Lady is the Immaculate Conception. Our Lady did not have original sin, she did not have concupiscence, and therefore she did not need to die. As Paul says in Romans, the wages of sin is death. Mary never committed a venial sin. She never committed a mortal sin. She didn't have original sin. So Mary did not need to die. And yet, as we look at the icons in the Eastern Church and we read the early homilies about the Assumption of Our Lady and the earliest testimonies, there is this idea that she falls asleep. And it's the idea that her soul and her body separate. And you can see there's an icon on the screen right now, and you'll see it's the Dormition of Our Lady. And you'll see Christ is holding the Blessed Virgin Mary. She's kind of looks like a little infant wrapped up. That's Mary's soul. And then down below, you'll see Our Lady laid out. She's fallen asleep. That's her body, and the apostles are around her. And this is depicting how she passes into the next life perfectly at peace, without any struggle, without any pain, because she's the new Eve, and she doesn't have any sin. There's actually a tradition in the Franciscan tradition that I think is wonderful, and I subscribe to it. It's the idea, it's also the Carmelites teach it as well. It's the idea that when she came to the end of her life, Christ appeared to her and said, uh, Blessed Mother, I'd like to bring you to heaven now. You've done your ministry on earth. It's time for you to begin your ministry in heaven. And would you like to pass away like the rest of humanity? Or would you like to have the privilege of not dying at all? And that this is a tradition. It's apocryphal. So this is not dogma. But her answer was, Lord, I want to be in all things like you. I want to experience the separation of the body and soul. So Our Lady experienced the separation of body and soul, what we normally call death, but her death was not on account of sin. This is why the church is always kind of reluctant to use the word death, even though it is used by popes and by Thomas Aquinas actually refers to Mary's death. But her death is unlike any other death because it's not a death unto sin. So the falling asleep is something that's established in our liturgical tradition and especially in the Eastern tradition. And I want to share with you a liturgical hymn from the Eastern Church, and it goes like this, quote, Neither the tomb nor death could hold the Theotokos, who is constant in prayer and our firm hope in her intercessions. For being the mother of life, she was translated to life by the one who dwelt in her virginal womb. Note here that the Eastern Church confesses that neither the tomb nor death could hold the mother of Jesus Christ. Again, affirming that she is sinless. The tomb cannot hold her. So what happened is, is her body and soul separated at the end of her life, as we see in the Eastern iconography, as we all the doctors of the church who speak of this talk about this dormition, right, and this separation of the body and soul. And then, according to tradition, she is glorified. She is resurrected. Her body is lifted up and is seated at the right hand of Jesus Christ. So Thank you.